Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Bob Dole again with Solution Driven Wealth, and we uh, are recording again in our series of videos that we've been uh, putting out um, during this coronavirus and uncertain times. And again, our main message to you is that uh, is for your health and obviously the well-being of both you and for your families. So if you have any questions um, after viewing this video or during the uh, time period following it, uh, please reach out to us. You might have questions about your accounts, the economy, uh, state planning issues that have come up during this period of time, uh, insurance questions, you name it. Please reach out to me and my team and uh, we'll be happy to help you. So let me do a recap of our of the first half of this year and also more importantly, um, some items to consider as we enter into the election season, which we expect to be a volatile period. Uh, the equity markets experienced one of the most volatile times, if not the most volatile time in our history. And then in March, obviously, the economy went on quarantine and we saw the equity markets go from a bull market to a bear market, the fastest in our country's history. Since that time, we've almost experienced almost a V-shaped type recovery. Um, it's really been one of fits and starts. Um, the market moving higher when uh, positive news about states reopening and uh, the flattening of the curve. And we saw also job creation and um, unemployment go from like 13% down to 11. The US stock market recorded one of its best quarters in nearly 20 years. What are some of the challenges and characteristics that we've experienced right now? Well, we have very low bond yield. We've seen gold actually rise a bit here. Unemployment did skyrocket. Oil prices were obviously very, very depressed. In Chinese, uh, the survey of factory activity is rising to a three-month high. So where are we today? On the East Coast, we've seen a very, very slow reopening of our economy and very conservative action by some of the governors in this state with a very slow reopening phase. So again, as we go around the country, we expect the economy to improve. And I think until we really get to a point where we have a vaccine and or therapy, we're really going to be stuck in that very slow growth in terms of economic activity as we move forward. One of the things that has really aided the recovery is the stimulus that's been added to the economy. We've seen about $72 billion added, added to stimulus per day by the Fed. We're approaching close to $10 trillion of our GDP. We've implemented things called the Corona Virus Relief Act and also the PPP, which many people are familiar with. That's injected a lot of capital very quickly into the economy, unemployment benefits extended, and the Fed has said, we will do whatever it takes. And that means they've kept rates low. Areas that were really dormant in the country uh, spurred a lot of housing activity, really increase activity in terms of housing permits, uh, velocity in housing sales around the country. The market has done quite well during this time period. However, um, from an economic standpoint, we have a few outcomes that uh, could occur. One is a V-shaped type um, recovery where we really get back uh, to where we want to be very quickly, and that would be by the end of the year. I would tell you that most economists don't believe that that will occur. The U-shaped recovery um, is probably the more likely scenario, so we expect that recovery. A uh, W-shaped recovery would be a scenario under which, yes, we recover, but then because there's another surge in pandemic activity, um, the economy takes another dip down Volatility over the next two to three months before the election is fully expected. It happens during every presidential election cycle. One of the concerns that I think we need to be mindful of are tax policies and the uncertainty of those tax policies layered on top of an already uncertain situation. But the big picture remains the same. Bull markets far outpace bear markets. The average bull market lasts about 72 months or six years, increasing about 280% in terms of total return. The average bear market lasts about 14 months, and the downturn is about 33% at the low point. We want to stay invested over the long term. Right now, we've seen very, very low interest rates. But as the coronavirus created a financial crisis here, 
um, the Fed dropped rates dramatically, like a stone in early 2020 to generate economic activity once again. This is very positive for those that are trying to refinance a house. We can see historically during times of economic uncertainty that some of our best and greatest companies have been created. And think about all of the companies working on a vaccine right now, or those companies engaged in digitization world that we're living in now and going to continue to uh, live in as we move forward. So another great reason to stay invested in the markets during this time period. People say, well, Bob, it's such a volatile time. Um, you know, this time is different. We've never had a situation where we've quarantined our economy. We really highly recommend that you stay the course in these circumstances. Short-term movements in and out of the market tend to not be productive. It is very, very difficult, even for professional traders, to get those trades right. If you jumped out of the market or removed yourself from the market before the 23rd of March, you really didn't experience as much of the recovery as you might have had you stay invested. A couple of the highlights that we want to point out to that are a positive, again, for our clients this year and we want to be aware of is that all required minimum distributions have been waived for 2020. You have actually, if you've taken an RMD earlier this year, you have until August the 31st to return that RMD to your account. Some options that we've been discussing with clients is if you've gone through this period now, do you still feel comfortable with the risk profile that you have right now? Or do we want to revisit that? That's issue one. So let's make sure that the allocation that we have is appropriate given your comfort level and what your goals and objectives are. The other thing that we've been discussing is part of the SECURE Act, which was legislation passed in late December of 2019. This really, in my mind, is an estate tax on your qualified assets. What this means is that under the old rule, um, non-spouse descendants could inherit your IRA and stretch out those um, uh, distributions over their life expectancy. So for many, many years, under the new rule that was passed, they have to exhaust those accounts within 10 years. And our goal during these video chats and correspondences, number one is to make sure that you're okay but also to keep you as informed on the markets and economic conditions as we can possibly keep you. We are always here to help you. We'll be reaching out over the coming weeks to schedule some review meetings, but please don't wait for those calls. If you wanna to talk to us before then, give us a call. We'll fit you in our calendar and we'll have a nice conversation. And our best to you and your families during this period of time. We'll get through it and we look forward to speaking with you again real soon.